I'm Mike Sullivan. Okay, so you've been working on your alignment, you've got a good grip, you've got good posture, you're swinging through and finishing with your weight on your front side, and you're still having trouble hitting consistent golf shots. Well, what might be missing is you, what might be missing is you might be missing the swing in your swing. So assuming that you're doing well on your alignment and you've got a pretty good setup, you're, you're, you're in good shape to make some good golf shots and to play some pretty good golf. Um, here's what happens. In order for somebody, and let's just say that you're going about this really the right way. So you start off getting some instruction or you start off reading a book or looking at some, some videos for some help and you learn about the grip. So you learn about putting your, your top hand on the club with this V here going to your right shoulder, your right hand goes on, your bottom hand goes on, matching up with, with where the target is. You've got a nice interlocking grip or, or an overlapping grip, and um, you know you got that. You've got good ball position. You, you understand about having alignment. You're practicing with alignment sticks. So these things are all good because they're getting you in, in position so that if you make an efficient golf swing, then you'll hit a good shot. So you're, you're setting yourself, you're, you're up, you're, in, you're incentivizing yourself to hit some good shots and to make some good swings. So why are we not getting really great results? Well, the things that you consciously have done to put yourself in position to play good golf, those conscious thoughts don't really match up with creating a swing, creating centrifugal force. So, you know, if I, if I take my club and I just do this right here, and I ask just about anybody, what does that remind them of? It reminds you of a clock, right? It's the pendulum on a clock. And we've all heard about this pendulum type of, a, type of a motion that works really well for putting. Well, this is something that we want to do for all of our shots. We want a true swing. I'm barely holding this club. So the first thing that we wanna do when it comes to learning to swing this club better is to make sure that we're gripping it nice and relaxed. Now, I very rarely see somebody grip the club in, in such a relaxed way that they throw their club down the fairway. I, I hardly ever see that. Uh, I've seen it once or twice though, but, but very rarely. But I see an awful lot of people gripping the club really, really tightly. And when you grip the club tightly, you're, you're setting yourself up to be in a place where your hands are gonna control this club. So when, when we're swinging go the golf club and we're getting this sort of a thing, we're controlling the club so much with our hands, sometimes things can work out pretty well. Sometimes we can get that club head on that ball exactly right, moving exactly the right way and hit some good shots. And if you're really strong, you may be able to get some good distance out of that. As a matter of fact, sometimes being physically strong is actually a detriment to you learning how to play golf really well because, because of that strength, you can get away with this really handsy and armsy type of a swing. So we don't want that, we want to swing the club. So here's what we're gonna start with. I'm going to just swing this club and listen to the whoosh noise. And hopefully my microphone doesn't make a ton of noise as I do this. Now, what's happening is as I do this, and I want you to do this. Swing the club and get a feel and think about what's happening. From the other instruction you've gotten, you know that you want your hands to lead that club in. We don't want this to happen. So try this. Think about what's happening with your hands relative to the club head as you make these swings. There's a certain way that we start this downswing where if we turn back and then we start turning through the right way, we create that lag, right? Make sure as you're doing this, you can hold your finish. 
So I feel really, really relaxed. I'm swinging the club, I'm barely holding on to it. Now, here's where we go. Here comes the dog. Maybe you can see the dog, but that's okay. So here's what happens. Now, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and hit a shot. I'm gonna line it up. Let's do this. Okay, so I missed it. I actually caught that fat. I, I drop kicked it. I hit the ground first. So when that happens to you, what just happened? What was that? Think about that. It could be a couple things. You know, you may be trying to swing the club in su such a relaxed way that you get a little sloppy and a little lazy. So we don't want to be that relaxed. We have to practice and get a feel for what is the right amount of relaxation. So I want to relax, but I don't want to be sloppy and lazy. Okay, so that one was a lot better. That wasn't quite so sloppy, not quite so lazy. It was still nice and relaxed. Now, as we're doing this, why is it that we may hit some bad shots still? Why is that? Well, a few things. One is focus. How focused can I be right now having a conversation with you over there, right? So when you practice, you need to make sure that you're able to focus on what it is that you're doing. There's Cookie, there's the dog, okay. Good dog. It makes it more fun to have a dog around, right? Oh, that was a great one. That was really good. So. What I want you to do is I want you to go to the driving range. It's really great if you're at the range, you can hit some balls. And spend some time just getting a feel with a nice, relaxed, loose grip, getting that club to swing. Hold that finish, make sure you're balanced. Hit some balls, practice. By being relaxed and letting the club swing, and I'm not giving you a lot of specific mechanical advice here because I don't want you to think about it. I want you to have a practice session where you're just swinging the club and practicing. The more you practice, the better you're going to be at making contact and hitting shots. So here's another one you can do. I may not want to do this with a driver, but you can do this with an iron. You can line up a whole bunch of balls here, right? Maybe you've seen this done before. Last two were a little hooky, but you get the idea. And believe me, I've only got a driver with me right now. It's tough with a driver. You can do this though with a seven iron, with an eight iron, but you're going to develop this really wonderful skill, hand-eye coordination, making solid contact. And the better job you do of just swinging the club, picturing ball flight, the better you're gonna play on the course. Uh -huh.